Question 1. What are the five key steps for hand washing effectively? A. Wet, soap, wash, dry, repeat. B. Soap, lather, rinse, dry, sanitize. C. Wet, lather, scrub, rinse, dry. D. Soak, scrub, rinse, dry, polish. Answer. C. Wet, lather, scrub, rinse, dry. These steps ensure that hands are properly cleaned, reducing the risk of spreading foodborne illnesses. Question 2. How should food handlers properly use gloves to prevent contamination? A. Change gloves every hour, regardless of the task. B. Wash gloves instead of changing them to save resources. C. Use gloves in place of hand washing. D. Change gloves between tasks and when torn or heavily soiled. Answer. D. Change gloves between tasks and when torn or heavily soiled. This prevents cross-contamination between different food items or dirty equipment. Question 3. What is the temperature danger zone for foodborne bacteria growth? A. 32 degree Fahrenheit to 68 degree Fahrenheit. 0 degree Celsius to 20 degree Celsius. B. 41 degree Fahrenheit to 135 degree Fahrenheit. 5 degree Celsius to 57 degree Celsius. C. 0 degree Fahrenheit to 32 degree Fahrenheit. Minus 18 degree Celsius to 0 degree Celsius. D. 135 degree Fahrenheit to 165 degree Fahrenheit. 57 degree Celsius to 74 degree Celsius. Answer. B. 41 degree Fahrenheit to 135 degree Fahrenheit. 5 degree Celsius to 57 degree Celsius. This range is where foodborne bacteria can grow most rapidly and must be avoided to prevent foodborne illness. Question 4. Describe the steps for performing a proper cooling process for cooked foods. A. Leave at room temperature until cool, then refrigerate. B. Cool rapidly in ice water bath, then move to refrigerator. C. Place directly in the freezer to cool quickly. D. Keep food covered and cool under running water. Answer. B. Cool rapidly in ice water bath, then move to refrigerator. This method quickly brings food through the danger zone to a safe temperature. Question 5. What are the minimum internal cooking temperatures for beef, poultry, pork, and seafood? A. Beef. 145 degree Fahrenheit, poultry. 165 degree Fahrenheit, pork. 145 degree Fahrenheit, seafood. 145 degree Fahrenheit, B. Beef. 160 degree Fahrenheit, poultry. 165 degree Fahrenheit, pork. 160 degree Fahrenheit, seafood. 135 degree Fahrenheit. C. Beef. 135 degree Fahrenheit. Poultry. 155 degree Fahrenheit. Pork. 140 degree Fahrenheit. Seafood. 145 degree Fahrenheit. D. Beef. 165 degree Fahrenheit. Poultry. 175 degree Fahrenheit. Pork. 165 degree Fahrenheit, seafood, 155 degree Fahrenheit. Answer. A. Beef. 145 degree Fahrenheit, poultry. 165 degree Fahrenheit, pork. 145 degree Fahrenheit, seafood. 145 degree Fahrenheit. These temperatures ensure the safety of the foods killing potentially harmful bacteria. Question 6. How can cross-contamination be prevented in the kitchen? A. Use the same cutting board for meat and vegetables. B. Store raw meat above ready-to-eat foods in the refrigerator. C. Wash hands and surfaces often. Use separate equipment for raw and cooked foods. D. Rinse fruits and vegetables with water only if they look dirty. Answer. C. Wash hands and surfaces often. Use separate equipment for raw and cooked foods. 
This reduces the risk of harmful pathogens being transferred from one food to another. Question 7. Explain the significance of maintaining cold chain integrity for perishable foods. A. It ensures foods taste better. B. It is only necessary for dairy products. C. It prevents spoilage and growth of harmful bacteria by keeping foods at safe temperatures. D. Cold chain practices are a preference, not a requirement. Answer. C. It prevents spoilage and growth of harmful bacteria by keeping foods at safe temperatures. Maintaining the cold chain is crucial for food safety. Question 8. What procedures should be followed when receiving food deliveries to ensure food safety? A. Accept all deliveries, regardless of their condition. B. Check the temperature, look for signs of tampering, and verify expiration dates. C. Store deliveries immediately without inspection. D. Only inspect high-value items. Answer. B. Check the temperature, look for signs of tampering, and verify expiration dates. These steps help ensure that the food received is safe and of good quality. Question 9. How should a foodborne illness outbreak be reported and managed in a food service operation? A. Keep it confidential to avoid bad publicity. B. Inform the local health department, cooperate with the investigation, and implement corrective actions. C. Blame the last supplier and change suppliers. D. Offer discounts to affected customers instead of reporting. Answer. B. Inform the local health department, cooperate with the investigation, and implement corrective actions. This is the responsible way to handle an outbreak and prevent future incidents. Question 10. What are the primary symptoms of foodborne illness that food handlers should be aware of? A. Tiredness and headache. B. Vomiting, diarrhea, and fever. C. Hunger and thirst. D. Coughing and sneezing. Answer. B. Vomiting, diarrhea, and fever. These symptoms can indicate a foodborne illness, and affected individuals should not handle food. Question 11. Describe the proper storage order of different types of food in a refrigerator to prevent cross-contamination. A. Vegetables on top, then seafood, beef, pork, and poultry at the bottom. B. Poultry on top, then pork, beef, seafood, and vegetables at the bottom. C. Everything stored together for efficient use of space. D. Based on cooking temperatures, but no specific order required. Answer. A. Vegetables on top, then seafood, beef, pork, and poultry at the bottom. This order protects ready-to-eat and less susceptible foods from contamination by those with higher risk. Question 12. What are the major food allergens identified by the FDA, and how should they be managed in the kitchen? A. Gluten, corn, rice, and beef. B. Milk, eggs, fish, shellfish, tree nuts, peanuts, wheat, and soybeans, managed through segregation and clear labeling. C. Only peanuts and shellfish, as they are the most common. D. Food allergens don't need special management if the kitchen is clean. Answer. B. Milk, eggs, fish, shellfish, tree nuts, peanuts, wheat, and soybeans, managed through segregation and clear labeling. Proper management minimizes the risk of allergen cross-contact. Question 13. Explain the role of time temperature control in preventing foodborne illness. A. It ensures food is cooked quickly. B. It is only necessary for certain types of meat. C. It prevents the growth of harmful bacteria by keeping food out of the danger zone. D. Temperature control is less important than ingredient quality. Answer. C. It prevents the growth of harmful bacteria by keeping food out of the danger zone. Time temperature control is crucial for food safety across all food types. Question 14. What is the correct procedure for cleaning and sanitizing kitchen equipment and surfaces? A. Rinse with water only to conserve cleaning supplies. B. Clean with soap and water, then apply an approved sanitizer. C. Sanitizing once a week is sufficient. 
D. Use bleach for all cleaning and sanitizing tasks. Answer. B. Clean with soap and water, then apply an approved sanitizer. This two-step process is necessary to first remove debris and then kill any remaining pathogens. Question 15. How should a food handler address a customer's food allergy concern? A. Assume common allergens and avoid them. B. Inform the customer about menu items that can be made without the allergen and ensure no cross-contact occurs during preparation. C. Suggest the customer eat elsewhere. D. Remove the allergen from the dish without notifying the customer. Answer. B. Inform the customer about menu items that can be made without the allergen and ensure no cross-contact occurs during preparation. Clear communication and careful preparation can safely accommodate customers with allergies. Question 16. What is the importance of a HKCCP plan in a food service operation? A. It is only required for large operations. B. Identifies critical control points to prevent, eliminate, or reduce hazards to safe levels. C. HACCP plans are too complex to implement. D. It focuses solely on end product testing. Answer. B. Identifies critical control points to prevent, eliminate, or reduce hazards to safe levels. A Haney CCP plan is a systematic approach to food safety that is essential for all food service operations. Question 17. Describe the process for safely thawing frozen food. A. On the counter at room temperature. B. In the refrigerator, under cold running water, or as part of the cooking process. C. In hot water to speed up thawing. D. Using a microwave and leaving the food at room temperature afterward. Answer. B. In the refrigerator, under cold running water, or as part of the cooking process. These methods safely thaw food without allowing it to enter the temperature danger zone. Question 18. How can pest infestations be prevented in food service areas? A. By keeping doors and windows open for ventilation. B. Regular cleaning, sealing entry points, and proper waste management. C. Using pesticides regularly in all areas of the kitchen. D. Ignoring small pests as they do not pose a significant risk. Answer. B. Regular cleaning, sealing entry points, and proper waste management. These practices are essential to prevent pests, which can carry diseases, from entering food preparation and storage areas. Question 19. What actions should be taken if a food handler is feeling sick or showing symptoms of illness? A. Continue working but avoid handling food directly. B. Report the symptoms to a supervisor and stay away from the food service area. C. Take medication and work as usual. D. Wear a mask and gloves to prevent spreading the illness. Answer. B. Report the symptoms to a supervisor and stay away from the food service area. Food handlers who are sick should not work with or around food to prevent contaminating the food and spreading illness. Question 20. How should waste be properly disposed of in a food service operation? A. In any available space outside the kitchen. B. By burning it at the end of each day. C. Using designated containers, separating recyclables, and ensuring containers are regularly emptied and cleaned. D. Waste disposal is not a priority if the kitchen is kept clean. Answer. C. Using designated containers, separating recyclables, and ensuring containers are regularly emptied and cleaned. Proper waste disposal helps maintain a clean environment and reduces the risk of attracting pests. Question 21. What is the role of food safety management systems in ensuring food safety? A. To make daily cleaning schedules. B. To provide a structured approach for identifying, monitoring, and minimizing food safety risks. C. To track employee work hours. D. To oversee menu development only. Answer. B. To provide a structured approach for identifying, monitoring, and minimizing food safety risks. These systems are crucial for continuously assessing and improving food safety practices. Question 22. 
how should chemical sanitizers be used and stored in the kitchen? A. Stored openly for easy access and mixed with clean agents for efficiency. B. Used sparingly to save costs, regardless of manufacturer's instructions. C. Kept in their original containers, clearly labeled, and stored away from food preparation areas. D. Diluted with twice the water recommended to ensure safety. Answer. C. Kept in their original containers, clearly labeled, and stored away from food preparation areas. Proper use and storage of chemical sanitizers prevent contamination and ensure effective sanitization. Question 23. Explain the importance of regular equipment maintenance for food safety. A. Maintenance is only necessary when equipment breaks down. B. Regular maintenance prevents equipment malfunctions that can lead to food safety hazards. C. Equipment maintenance has no impact on food safety. D. It's primarily about keeping the kitchen looking modern. Answer. B. Regular maintenance prevents equipment malfunctions that can lead to food safety hazards. Ensuring that equipment is functioning correctly is crucial for safe food preparation and storage. Question 24. What are the guidelines for serving food to high-risk populations? A. Serve food as requested without special considerations. B. High-risk populations should only eat pre-packaged foods. C. Use higher cooking temperatures and avoid serving high-risk foods like raw eggs or seafood. D. Serve leftovers to minimize waste. Answer. C. Use higher cooking temperatures and avoid serving high-risk foods like raw eggs or seafood. Special precautions should be taken to protect high-risk populations from foodborne illnesses. Question 25. Describe the procedures for conducting a food safety audit. A. Checking the expiration dates on all products once a year. B. A comprehensive review of food safety practices, documentation, and employee knowledge. C. Audits are conducted by customers through feedback forms. D. Only auditing the food storage areas. Answer. B. A comprehensive review of food safety practices, documentation, and employee knowledge. Food safety audits are essential for ensuring that a food service operation adheres to established food safety standards. Question 26. How does proper ventilation contribute to food safety in the kitchen? A. It doesn't. Ventilation is for comfort, not safety. B. By reducing cooking odors only. C. By removing airborne contaminants and reducing excess moisture. D. Proper ventilation is only necessary in dining areas. Answer. C. By removing airborne contaminants and reducing excess moisture. Effective ventilation systems help maintain air quality and reduce the risk of contamination. Question 27. What factors should be considered when developing a food recall plan? A. The plan should focus solely on high-cost items. B. Methods for identifying and locating affected food, notifying relevant parties, and removing the product from sale. C. Recalls are managed by suppliers, not the food service operation. D. Only considering recalls for non-perishable items. Answer. B. Methods for identifying and locating affected food, notifying relevant parties, and removing the product from sale. A food recall plan must be comprehensive and actionable to effectively manage the process and minimize risk to consumers. Question 28. How can technology be utilized to enhance food safety practices? A. By replacing all manual food safety checks with automated systems. B. Technology has no role in traditional food safety practices. C. Using digital tools for monitoring temperatures, tracking food safety training, and managing inventory. D. Solely for online food safety training purposes. Answer. C. Using digital tools for monitoring temperatures, tracking food safety training, and managing inventory. Technology can significantly improve the efficiency and reliability of food safety practices. Question 29. Explain the procedures for safely reheating leftovers for hot holding. A. Reheat to any temperature as long as it feels hot. B. 
reheat to at least 165 degree Fahrenheit, 74 degree Celsius for 15 seconds before holding at 135 degree Fahrenheit, 57 degree Celsius or higher. C. Leftovers should not be reheated but served cold. D. Use a microwave and serve immediately without checking the temperature. Answer. B. Reheat to at least 165 degree Fahrenheit, 74 degree Celsius for 15 seconds before holding at 135 degree Fahrenheit, 57 degree Celsius or higher. This ensures that leftovers are reheated safely to eliminate potential pathogens. Question 30. What are the guidelines for effective hand hygiene in food service? A. Hand washing is optional if gloves are worn. B. Washing hands with soap and water for at least 20 seconds, especially after handling raw food or using the restroom. C. Using hand sanitizer in place of hand washing. D. Only washing hands at the beginning of the shift. Answer. B. Washing hands with soap and water for at least 20 seconds, especially after handling raw food or using the restroom. Effective hand hygiene is a cornerstone of preventing foodborne illness. Question 31. How should live shellfish be received and stored to ensure safety? A. Stored at room temperature to maintain freshness. B. Received on ice or refrigerated and stored at temperatures below 41 degree Fahrenheit, 5 degree Celsius. C. Kept in sealed containers to prevent contamination. D. Live shellfish do not require special storage conditions. Answer. B. Received on ice or refrigerated and stored at temperatures below 41 degree Fahrenheit, 5 degree Celsius. Proper storage conditions are critical for maintaining the safety and quality of live shellfish. Question 32. Describe the importance of water quality in food preparation. A. Water quality only affects the taste of food, not safety. B. Poor water quality can introduce contaminants into food and beverages, posing a health risk. C. All tap water is safe for food preparation. D. Boiling water is sufficient to make it safe for all uses. Answer. B. Poor water quality can introduce contaminants into food and beverages, posing a health risk. Ensuring water used in food preparation is safe and of high quality is essential for preventing foodborne illness. Question 33. What are the consequences of failing to adhere to food safety regulations? A. Minor fines that can be easily absorbed as a cost of doing business. B. Possible legal action, fines, and closure of the food service operation. C. No significant consequences, as regulations are guidelines, not requirements. D. A warning letter with no further action. Answer. B. Possible legal action, fines, and closure of the food service operation. Non-compliance with food safety regulations can result in severe penalties, including the potential shutdown of the business. Question 34. How should cutting boards be maintained to prevent cross-contamination? A. Use the same board for all types of food to minimize cleaning. B. Use separate boards for raw meats, seafood, poultry, and vegetables. C. Cleaning with water only after each use. D. Replace cutting boards annually regardless of their condition. Answer. B. Use separate boards for raw meats, seafood, poultry, and vegetables. This practice prevents cross-contamination between raw and ready-to-eat foods. Question 35. Explain the importance of food safety training for new and existing staff. A. Training is only necessary for new staff, as experienced staff do not need refreshers. B. Ensures all team members are aware of and can implement food safety practices correctly. C. Food safety training is less critical than customer service training. D. Only management needs food safety training. Answer. B. Ensures all team members are aware of and can implement food safety practices correctly. Continuous training is essential to maintain high standards of food safety. Question 36. What are the critical control points in a typical food service operation? 
A, points where customer service can be improved. B, steps in the food preparation process where hazards can be prevented, eliminated, or reduced to safe levels. C, only related to the final cooking stage. D, limited to receiving and storage. Answer, B. Steps in the food preparation process where hazards can be prevented, eliminated, or reduced to safe levels. Identifying and managing critical control points is fundamental to ensuring food safety. Question 37. How can food handlers identify and prevent time temperature abuse? A. By tasting food at different stages of preparation. B. Regularly monitoring and recording temperatures during storage, preparation, and service. C. Ignoring temperature guidelines for faster service. D. Focusing solely on ambient room temperatures. Answer. B. Regularly monitoring and recording temperatures during storage, preparation, and service. This prevents time temperature abuse by ensuring food is not left in the danger zone. Question 38. What are the best practices for ice handling and storage in food service? A. Treating ice as a food product, using clean, dedicated scoops, and storing away from contaminants. B. Using any available container for scooping ice. C. Allowing staff to use hands for convenience. D. Storing ice next to raw meats for space efficiency. Answer. A. Treating ice as a food product, using clean, dedicated scoops, and storing away from contaminants. Proper handling and storage practices prevent the contamination of ice. Question 39. Describe the process for safely using and storing cooking oils. A. Reusing oil indefinitely to reduce waste. B. Storing oils near heat sources to keep them liquid. C. Properly labeling and storing oils away from contaminants, ensuring used oil is disposed of correctly. D. Cooking oils do not require special storage conditions. Answer. C. Properly labeling and storing oils away from contaminants, ensuring used oil is disposed of correctly. Safe handling and storage of cooking oils are important to prevent accidents and maintain quality. Question 40. How can behavioral economics be applied to improve food safety practices among employees? A. By providing incentives for shortcuts in food safety procedures. B. Creating systems that make it easier and more rewarding for employees to follow food safety practices. C. Behavioral economics is not relevant to food safety. D. Punishing employees for every small mistake to enforce compliance. Answer. B. Creating systems that make it easier and more rewarding for employees to follow food safety practices. Applying principles of behavioral economics can encourage safer food handling behaviors through positive reinforcement and streamlined procedures. Question 41. What measures should be taken to prevent food tampering in a food service operation? A. Leave deliveries unattended in public areas. B. Implement security measures, such as surveillance cameras and tamper-evident packaging. C. Only check products for tampering at the end of the day. D. Assume suppliers have already checked for tampering. Answer. B. Implement security measures, such as surveillance cameras and tamper-evident packaging. These steps help ensure the integrity of food products and protect against tampering. Question 42. Explain the significance of maintaining food safety records and logs. A. They are only necessary for health inspections. B. Provides a documented history of food safety practices, aiding in identifying and correcting issues. C. Record keeping is an outdated practice. D. Logs should be maintained for equipment only, not food safety. Answer. B. Provides a documented history of food safety practices, aiding in identifying and correcting issues. Accurate records are essential for tracking food safety efforts and compliance. Question 43. How should food handlers manage symptoms of vomiting or diarrhea? A. Continue working, but avoid direct contact with food. B. Immediately report symptoms to a manager and exclude themselves from work. C. 
Use personal protective equipment to contain symptoms. D. Drink plenty of fluids to stay hydrated and continue working. Answer. B. Immediately report symptoms to a manager and exclude themselves from work. Food handlers showing these symptoms pose a high risk of contaminating food and should not be at work. Question 44. Describe the guidelines for maintaining safe food temperatures during transport. A. Use insulated containers to keep hot foods hot, above 135 degree Fahrenheit, and cold foods cold, below 41 degree Fahrenheit. B. Transport all foods at room temperature to save on resources. C. Checking temperatures before and after transport is optional. D. Only cold foods need temperature control during transport. Answer. A. Use insulated containers to keep hot foods hot, above 135 degree Fahrenheit, and cold foods cold, below 41 degree Fahrenheit. Proper temperature control during transport is crucial to prevent bacterial growth. Question 45. What is the role of a food safety inspector in a restaurant? A. To assist with menu planning. B. Inspect the establishment for compliance with food safety regulations and provide guidance for improvement. C. Only to check the cleanliness of the dining area. D. Food safety inspectors do not visit restaurants. Answer. B. Inspect the establishment for compliance with food safety regulations and provide guidance for improvement. Inspectors play a key role in ensuring restaurants adhere to food safety standards. Question 46. How can a food establishment prepare for a health inspection? A. By closing the establishment on the day of inspection. B. Regularly reviewing and practicing food safety protocols to ensure compliance at all times. C. Only focusing on food safety practices a few days before the inspection. D. Bribing the inspector for a favorable report. Answer. B. Regularly reviewing and practicing food safety protocols to ensure compliance at all times. Continuous adherence to food safety standards is the best preparation for a health inspection. Question 47. What are the guidelines for effective use of food thermometers? A. Guessing the temperature based on cooking time. B. Calibrating regularly, inserting the probe into the thickest part of the food and ensuring it does not touch bone or fat. C. Using the same thermometer for raw and cooked foods without cleaning. D. Only using thermometers for meats, not other food types. Answer. B. Calibrating regularly, inserting the probe into the thickest part of the food, and ensuring it does not touch bone or fat. Correct use of food thermometers is essential for accurately assessing food temperatures. Question 48. Describe the impact of food safety on public health. A. Food safety has minimal impact on public health. B. Strong food safety practices prevent foodborne illnesses, protecting community health and reducing healthcare costs. C. Public health concerns are unrelated to food safety practices. D. Modern advancements have eliminated the need for food safety. Answer. B. Strong food safety practices prevent foodborne illnesses, protecting community health and reducing healthcare costs. Effective food safety measures are crucial for safeguarding public health. Question 49. How can restaurants ensure the safety and quality of food served through third-party delivery services? A. By avoiding the use of third-party delivery services. B. Ensuring that food is properly packaged and held at safe temperatures until pickup, communicating clearly with delivery services about food safety standards. C. Responsibility for food safety shifts to the delivery service once the food leaves the restaurant. D. Serving only cold or room temperature foods for delivery. Answer. B. Ensuring that food is properly packaged and held at safe temperatures until pickup. Communicating clearly with delivery services about food safety standards. Maintaining control over food safety practices up to the point of handoff is essential. Question 50. What are the best practices for cooling hot foods safely? A. Cooling foods at room temperature to preserve taste. B. 
Using shallow pans for quick cooling, stirring liquids during cooling, and utilizing ice baths or rapid chill methods. C. Placing hot foods directly in the refrigerator to cool down over several hours. D. Covering hot foods tightly during cooling to retain moisture. Answer. B. Using shallow pans for quick cooling, stirring liquids during cooling, and utilizing ice baths or rapid chill methods. These practices facilitate rapid cooling, reducing the time food spends in the temperature danger zone.